The views and opinions expressed in Media Litter Sandwich do not reflect on the views of the network, station, studio, website, sponsors, guests, hosts themselves, anyone or anything else associated or even not associated with this podcast. Maybe not even the person that said them. In other words, do your own research and do not sue anyone over what is said on this show. You can't have a girl power moment and then A, show that all the girls were not busy when everyone else was busy and B, <laughs> right. fail at their mission. Right. It doesn't work she, that she way. She dropped it, right? Didn't she drop it? Or? Something. It didn't work. That's not a girl power moment. That's kind of a failure. I and, uh, Welcome to Media Litter Sandwich. <laughs> With me today is, you're wearing Ghostbusters. It, well, everyone knows Eric. We've actually mentioned him several times on this show. Uh You've been on this show. You were one of the first guests, I want to say. You were like in episode maybe 10 or 11, something like that, maybe in the early 20s. Yeah. (laughs) It's been, I've known you for a while now as far as doing this. So, yeah. Uh, Go ahead and refresh. Uh, Uh, My name is uh, Eric, and uh, my Eric Milkman is my alias. Uh, My real name, believe it or not, is Lindo, uh, but I do go by the nickname handle, which. I don't know if I should put that in here or not, but I, as far as officially goes, I go by Eric Milkman, but I'm the... Mm-hmm. Uh, You're found by Eric Milkman. Yeah. I am, a, I am the founder of Ghostbusters Detroit and a co-founder of the Great Lakes Ghostbuster Coalition. <laughs> I'm Scotty Miali, better known as Toten, and of course this is Media Litter Sandwich, which can be found at MediaLitterSandwich.com, and you can find me at Toten.com, and if you're listening to the audio, there is a video version on YouTube, which you can find at either of those websites or YouTube.com slash Toad and K. And the video version is different than the audio version because we're often distracted by people running uh, down <laughs> the street here um, at the Foundation Hotel, and I always got to give it up to the staff here. They are so patient, so wonderful. They deal with idiot podcasters like me (laughs) all the time, and that's not their job. They actually run a hotel and a wonderful restaurant, and I don't know what else. There's actually, if you get a chance after this, walk around the lobby. There's actually some great art. If you walk, like, towards the bathroom, there's a little more of a lobby area. There's some great art over there. And there's actually some kind of weird egg art right outside the door, too. I'll definitely, I'll have to check it out. I, I have not been here before, believe it or not. I, I don't I you're, don't think I have probably walked by. You're a Ghostbuster. You need yeah. to check out every fire station that's not a fire station. It is, it is so hard because it's basically like, you know, how the, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So basically, <laughs> every all the people that get a hold of us, we try to, you know, to go out to. So we don't really have the opportunity to kind of just browse around or look uh-huh. for things because we are, we have a full schedule, you know, we're always, we're always doing stuff and they, people, we, we know what we're going to do based on what people are asking us to do for the most part. So every <laughs> once in a while we're able to, I try to like poke for certain things that I want to push for that we can be at. Um, but for the most part, the majority of our events are all from hearsay or people seeing us and asking us to come out. Okay. Uh, for those that don't know, what do you mean by come out? Like, what exactly do you guys do? You, Ghostbuster, Detroit Ghostbusters, and Detroit Ghostbusters Coalition. Right. Someone that doesn't know what anything those what those are. Um, so there's the I can I can't sum it up too much, um, but the, there's a film on Netflix called Ghost Heads, which sums it up perfectly. I'll I'll do what I can do, but we basically uh, we're a bunch of. Um, costumers that dress up as Ghostbusters, act like Ghostbusters, and we go out and we we try to raise awareness to different uh, <laughs> to, to different uh, causes. Um, there's people walking back. by. That's that's I wasn't laughing at what we do. What we do, but uh, it, 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 big window. Yeah. I try to get people to wave back. They they didn't. Um, I think they, they that guy's got AirPods. You see that? That's. <laughs> That's a statement. There's a meme that we can. Uh, well, uh, sorry, sorry. Go, go. I, I distracted you. Go oh ahead. yeah, yeah. So we we um we're similar to uh, the the five hundred first, which was a Star Wars group, and um, we basically we we do different events. We do obviously we do comic cons because that's where this all oriented from was you know people dressing up in costumes, and uh, we go to different different charity events to try to root people on, and uh, we try to raise awareness for other causes, and we do parades, and um, if we can. Do 
do birthdays. We we try to do birthdays, but there is such a demand for birthdays. It's it's really hard to you know, we we it's hard for us to do a birthday for one person when we're going out to an event for hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So we have to do the event with hundreds of people rather than doing the one birthday. Even though that one birthday, when we can do it, it means a lot. It, you know, you know that kid remembers that for the rest of their lives. So, but that's that's basically what. Uh, that's what each franchise would do. And we formed myself, uh, Danny Holroyd, who's uh, the founder of the Kalamazoo Ghostbusters, and uh, Corwin, who was the founder, well, is the founder of Michigan Ghostbusters, which was one of the oldest franchises in Michigan before there was even other groups. Uh, they, they, were, they were a group for a long time. They've got tons of followers. Um, they're not quite as active as much, but they're uh, in the Buchanan area, uh, which is kind of like Southern West Michigan. And uh, us three, our three groups got together and we formed the Great Lakes Ghostbuster Coalition because we would, we'd go out to different events and be like, well, who are you? Well, we're Ghostbusters Detroit. And that's actually how we got our name is we're the guys from Detroit. So mm -hmm. all the other groups, before we were an official group, we would go out and dress up like, oh, the Detroit guys, the Detroit guys. Oh, so I'm like, well, we'll just, we'll call ourselves the real Ghostbusters Detroit because um, a good friend of mine, uh, Terrence and Kim, uh, they have a film called uh, Detroit Ghostbusters. So uh, we didn't want to confuse people with Ghostbusters Detroit or Detroit Ghostbusters as a group. So we went with the real Ghostbusters Detroit originally. But then we kind of gained popularity, and it was hard to say, we're the real Ghostbusters Detroit.com. So we just, all right, we're Ghostbusters Detroit. And that's how right. that became about. I remember that fan film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've met uh, Kim. Um, was it Kim, or, yeah Kim? I was yeah. thinking Kimberly because I usually see yep, the Kimberly. full name. Yeah, it's Kimberly. Um, yeah, I've met her at so at a bunch of comic cons and, and other film festivals. Oh and, yeah, and, yeah, and good stuff. The last I think the last time I seen her, we were we went to it was myself and Terry and uh, Kimberly, and we went to um, what was this past weekend? Uh, I don't want to say the wrong horror convention. Um, I, I, I Motor City Nightmares. Yeah, Motor City Nightmares. Motor City yeah. Nightmares was this past. Well, is that okay that I mentioned that previous um, <laughs> so time frame wise? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We're recording April thirtieth. We know that yeah. that was a few weeks ago. So um, Motor Maybe City Nightmares. Ago, I don't know. That was uh, the last time I think I, I think I saw her in person was we were at Motor City Nightmares and they had Jason Muse there and we were dressed up and uh, we've got some interesting pictures with Jason Muse and our slime mm -hmm. blower and um, I, she's in she was filming a sequel to that and she's. She was in Ohio now, so I don't really know what came about from that sequel. We haven't really, well, they haven't really done anything with it, but I was going to make a little cameo in it for them, you know. But uh, <laughs> there's, I mean, oh, man, uh, one of our members, actually a good friend of his, is um, he's going to start filming um, a Ghostbuster film uh, locally in this area here, like a uh, like a short film about, right. I think, I forgot how long he said, a half hour or so, but pro professional production quality. And um you know, he's going to be using us for some of the props and, and as far as some of the uh, the acting. Uh, he has actual professional actors that are going to be in this this short film. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty cool, I think, because the, the guy, um, he's very talented as far as the film goes. But, it'll, you know, you'll find out more about it later. I, I can't say too much about it because it's still right. It's it's not really um, too announced yet. So. Okay, let me try to sum that up, make sure I got everything. <laughs> Cosplay group, dress like Ghostbusters. Right. Go to tons of events. Anything. I mean, at anything, if you, have, you know, if you have the schedule open, even if it yep. doesn't, you have so many different chapters. You formed a coalition group. Right. So different chapters, or at least different people have you know can actually spread out and go to multiple events at the same time yep you guys aren't just dressed like ghostbusters but you bring a bunch of props with you yes. and and you make it an event around that mm -hmm. uh that that's really cool and top of that you've also acted and helped with films because you are open with your props you are you love showing this up this is your guys's like main hobby and everything right. How yeah. the heck do you guys stay in business and make money? Uh, well, we we don't make money. Um, everything that we have is um, is basically each member kind of contributes their own things to the group. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as uh, the the vehicles, I actually I have three ectomobiles. <laughs> 
I have uh, the 1977 Wagoneer that we drove Ernie Hudson mm-hmm. around in Detroit with that you see all the time. I have a 1984 Hearse, which was done up like the, the reboot movie um, from 2016, Answer the Call movie, uh, which I, I don't know if you've seen it or not. I I, I've seen it, yes. Yeah, yeah which yeah. Um, that unfortunately is in, in the shop, but it'll be it'll be up and running uh, next month, the end of it's next month. It's a cool month. car. It's yeah. a cool car. Not a cool movie, in my opinion. That's that's fine. I mean, but, I, I and they should have always called it "Answer the Call" or have a subtitle. That that's always been one of my biggest issue with reboots. Yeah. Give it a subtitle, and they did that uh, after the fact. A lot of the movies <laughs> right. do that after the after the fact, or even change the entire title well, later it, it on. It says "Answer the Call" in the in, in the end of the credits. It's after the end of the movie. It says "Ghostbusters Answer the Call." You and, must so. have saw the DVD version <laughs> and not the featured version. You know, I seen all of them. I know man. you saw the featured. <laughs> version uh but do you you know we uh, oh you guys got you guys got flown out and saw the featured version uh, we didn't not we didn't no? get flown out but we did we actually got invited we, yeah we drove it was uh basically sony was like hey um you know we got we're gonna we got some ideas some plans for the premiere and uh, there's tons of franchises around the world and we're gonna do something so so keep this this time frame open so i told everybody hey <laughs> i told the coalition i said guys i said Keep your time frame open. I said we're gonna find something out, and uh, um, I reached out to the. There's a couple. Though there's a the marketing team that Sony uses. Sony used for this specific movie in this area. Um, I reached out to them, and they were like, "Okay, they, we have some information for you." They gave it to me on this Monday morning, and I said, "I reached out to the coalition. Our hun- at the time we had I don't know, it was probably 110 uh, Ghostbusters around Michigan and part of Ohio, and I said, "Hey." I said, who can walk away from their life for a week? I said, I don't. I need to know right now because um, it's first come, first serve. But Sony sent out an invitation. Said, hey, um, come on out. You're going to see the premiere. We have a couple other things planned, but uh, we're not going to pay room and board. But you know, we're going to. They basically they they uh, they fed us uh, Papa John's, which from what I hear is Papa John is a was a big Ghostbuster fan, so that's why he he gave us the pizzas when we were at the premiere. Uh, they gave us a a fifty dollar gift card at Dave and Buster's uh, to play <laughs> games there, which I don't I don't think any of us actually used, but uh, they let us into the, uh, the um, the wax museum that was there, uh, and then we got to see we saw the we're on the red carpet premiere, which was actually green. They had a green carpet premiere and. Some a great group there. I, uh, I, I hope they're not listening. If they are listening, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't. I want to say it's the Hollywood Ghostbusters, but the group that was there in California actually got the green carpet from Sony, and they they messaged all the groups and said, "Hey, who wants some carpet? Give us a donation and uh, pay for shipping." So I actually, I have a bunch of the carpet. <laughs> That nice. um, yeah, from the the green carpet that they had, I've got it cut up in a box, and I don't think these guys are going to listen. But the the ones that went with us, I actually have a like a a shadow box that I'm working on to make mm-hmm. for them to put that carpet in there and a picture of them at the premiere and give it to them as a gift. Oh, but, that's really cool. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was an experience, and you know we started off with you know kind of going out, people not really the kids in the beginning when we were doing this, um, we didn't we didn't do many kid events because. Not many kids knew who we were, you know? We, right. We wouldn't go to schools. We didn't do... It's a different generation. Although people are like, oh, right. Ghostbusters is kid-friendly. But the kids didn't grow up with the no. 1980s Ghostbusters right. or we, the early <laughs> 90s TV shows. No, we they, did. Yeah, we did. Just because we know something. Right. It's like that realization. What, what my, uh, quick side story. One my friends, he learned uh, the theme song to the Gummy Bears. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so he played it for, for his niece or, or... What was he playing it on? On guitar? Uh, uh, yeah, on acoustic guitar. Gummy guitar. bears and it bouncing was, here and there and everywhere. And, he, and he, he's waiting for a reaction. <laughs> that goes, you have no idea what it is saying to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. I would have liked that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh but well, it start, became a regular when he would play open mics and. Uh, well, uh, start, it does, does he did the first part? Where it was like dashing and daring. And all to, of it. Okay. Is that he, how? How does it start? Is that how it started? I, I d- yeah. Do you remember or no? Something like that. I'm not okay. singing because I'm right. totally gonna mess it up. Oh, are we but gonna he get... would do the entire thing though. Is YouTube gonna pull this down because I sounded so good? They're gonna think it was an actual uh, copyright. Uh, no, no, but someone's gonna share this and like <laughs> check out this guy. <laughs> I know. Someone should share it. Because... I'm thinking of somebody right now, <laughs> Colin. I know Colin. He. Uh, uh, Colin, who is actually my partner's uh, younger brother, he has this fascination with Googling my name and yeah. finding these old audio clips. And nice. I think there was one of us uh, from years ago when we were at How To Halloween. Okay. Do you remember? I don't know if you remember that. 
I think we sat down and did a mic thing there. Right, right, and, right. That, yeah. that was that, that was this was that episode. The, that was this episode. That, that, that was uh, Media Lair Sounds. That, that was this podcast. Was that with Crazy Mark? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. I used to have Crazy Mark as a as another host. Uh, okay. We reformatted since then, and, and I had he, the slime. He's off around. doing many other things. I actually, I was, uh, I was. Yeah, going, I was even like, why are you <laughs> wearing that while you're singing? Isn't your back? No, no, I'm used to it. Okay. It, yeah, it was, it was right. light. It was light at the time. <laughs> so the, believe it or not, that pack is lighter than the other pack. So, okay. But I remember my, uh, I remember Colin making fun of me. He's like, cause I'm just like this with this pack. <laughs> like I hardly even, because where the camera was, you couldn't see my mouth. And I was just like this. And like I had this pack on there. Like, is he even talking? But, and, and, and it was dark. It's the darkest yeah. event. How to Halloween Lansing. And right. they do that on purpose because it's a Halloween event. Right. So we had to bring, make sure we brought lights. And they told us, hey, it, it, the lights are off. Make sure you bring your right. lights. <laughs> bring lights. And because it makes everything it makes everything look really good. So yeah. if you look so you some, just see Slimer right. peering up, and it was great. Yeah. No, I, I, that's, I love How to Halloween. Um, uh, Jerry that puts that on is a great guy. And oh, yeah. He, I, I wish I could I could come back out there. That was a, that was the first and last time I was there, but I want to go back out there. It was, it's oh, a, yeah. It's a pretty great event. Unfortunately, it's a very busy weekend. And yeah. the, I think last year I had like three different invitations, and I ended up having to go out of state for a totally different thing anyway. Know, that's what's rough about it. You know, this year. October is always like – the mm-hmm. busiest weekends are in October if you're into Halloween stuff. Right. But this this year so many things have been overlapping for us. Right. Like we're not like there's literally like we've had several events the same weekend and I'm like this was this isn't how it's how it's been for the past 3 years. Why are you guys doing this, you know? Yeah. But they don't they're not they're kind of different types of events. That's the problem with what we do is we you know, okay, we do we do charity walks and we do parades mm-hmm. and we do conventions. And then well, guess what? There's um, the um, the Frankenmuth MS walk is the same weekend as another event or the 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 Lansing MS walk is the same weekend as um I'm trying to think of what convention. Oh, I think it as Maker Fair, and I don't think it's the same oh, as Get yeah. Geeked. But Get Geeked is the same weekend as Maker Fair, <laughs> and uh, you know, which they have, they have the Ninja Turtles there. You saw that, like the voices from the cartoon. Yeah. Have you seen? Oh, them? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to be at the Michigan um, Comic Con. Well, Michigan Comic Con has uh, the mm. what do they have there? I thought the they were going to have the voices. They have the voices from the cartoon, right? right? And then at Get Geeked, they have the voices from the movie. Oh. <laughs> Right, and now it's it's good to be from Michigan right now. But now I now I feel <laughs> the need. To, I've got to I've got to plug like <laughs> Astronomicon. I got to plug right. uh, Fantasticon and all the other conventions that are like they're just amazing to us, you know. And uh, yeah, um, that's that's something about too, like Michigan <laughs> Comic Con when they when they came around here last year, when they were just like Michigan Comic Con, Cobo Hall. We're like. What everyone's like? What we're like? You know, look around the way. I mean, like I'm like, well, wait, that's- a Comic Con not afraid to be in Detroit, right? That, that well, I'm well. Detroit does have like two or three Comic Cons, um, not counting the one that refuses to be in Detroit. I don't like promoting them because they don't want to be in Detroit, but yet they're known as the Detroit Comic Con. Yeah, you can't call yourself a Detroit Comic Con if you refuse to go to Detroit. <laughs> I, I uh, you know, you can make excuses. Well, that was like the stadiums. Like, remember, we had uh, the stadiums that were out there that consider themselves Detroit too, and you know, it's, and and where are they now? Uh, I think one got torn down, didn't it? Or are they well, um, uh, the people that play at that stadium? Where are they now? I don't know. I'm not a sports guy. I'm a Ghostbuster. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I've seen a concert Not there or something. I, no, wh- wh- where are they now? Wait, wait, wait. Wh- which sport are you? Th- are you talking about uh, Lions that play at Ford Field? Are oh. you talking about the Pistons that play at, that play uh, in the Little Caesars Little Caesars Arena? They do now. Yeah, yeah. That's why I asked, where are they now? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you. I was thinking of like a like a um, I don't know, oh, yeah. VH1 like, 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 like or right, MTV. Like, you're like, where are they now? And I like, was like, right wait, now, I'm like, like at home, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I did. I, I I don't know. Maybe they're watching Avengers in the movie theater. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, but we what we like to do is um, the group likes to get together and uh, you know once in a while we we'll, we went to. Uh, 
we'll go to a movie or we'll go out to eat. All of us get together and do something. And um, everyone's like, in uniform or out of uniform? And I'm like, out of uniform. We're going to just go <laughs> as normal people. And then, then you, you can't be recognized everywhere you go. Right. Well, then, you know, when we do that, we look like a gang. We look like the weirdest looking <laughs> gang of people, you know, because we're all, we're all from different walks of life, mm-hmm. all of us in this group. So it's like you have the different, like this, usually a different group of people are just kind of all walk. We look like a gang or something. Or you, know. you just look like you just walked out of like working on a car. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess. Because we're all wearing, well, you're all wearing overalls. No, when we're not wearing that. Oh, okay. I'm saying when we're not wearing that, they know we're the ghost bus, we're wearing that together. But I'm saying okay. when, when we go out together as a group, we're such a diverse group that's like, you're, you're like, who are these people and where are they coming <laughs> from? So, but they're, uh, yeah, we just slowly trinkle in and then act like you don't know each other, but talk to each other. <laughs> well, it's that, way more fun. Well, it's funny. What'll happen is we'll, after an event, some of us will just take our uniform off and mm-hmm. then there's always like one or two that are still wearing them. And then we all walk in, there's like 10 of us walking in, there's an ecto parked out. Out, and the little kids are always looking at the two in the uniform, like, look at the Ghostbusters are there. Look, mom, you know, they're like the Ghostbusters are here, and it's uh, it's always uh, it's always it's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were talking about the kids, where you know, when we first started doing this, um, what did we what did we do first? We we uh, movie showings of the original movie was a big thing we went to. Obviously, conventions we went to, and then there was a couple times when a school asked us to come out, and we went out, and there was like two kids out of like. 50 that knew who we were and we're like wow. they were just fascinated they're fascinated with the gear and the equipment we had but they didn't quite know what we were or what we were doing there so that was when we were kind of like yeah we're gonna shy away from that but then as we were talking earlier when answer the call came out the kids saw that and even though we don't look like them from that movie they still you know then well when that came out they also re-release the yes. 80s ghostbusters and all the people from our generations and, and, and older go, oh, you like this? Here's the yep. one from the 80s. Wow, this was rated PG. <laughs> yep, and the, and the merchandise, too, that they pumped out. They were you know pumping out the Answer the Call merchandise, mm-hmm. and then they started just, you know what, this ain't working, and they just started pumping out all the original <laughs> real Ghostbusters stuff. And people and, are like, wow, this is so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, well, this I, is so much cooler. Wow, these people, at, wow, the. These guys actually have like personalities and stuff. <laughs> I, I like answer their call. I don't. I know. I get. I get a lot of crap from that. You know, a lot. Even from our own members, like uh, the majority of the members enjoyed answer the call. A lot of us that went to all of us that went to Hollywood and saw it because we all loved you it. had the experience. Yeah, the experience was amazing. The experience will change. Oh yeah, your opinion on a movie. There are some movies I've seen that are absolutely horrible, but I will remember the experience mm-hmm. and I enjoy it every time I watch it. Well, I mean, like I don't know if people like this movie, but Napoleon Dynamite when that first came out, horrible. You didn't like it? No, I, I still don't like it. I didn't like it Everyone when I first saw it. Everyone watches it. I remember every other day someone else was watching it. Yeah, I still think it's horrible. I hate it's it. Funny. But. When I first saw it, I hated it. I didn't think <laughs> anything was funny about it. And then I had another friend that was like, hey, have you seen this? I'm like, I've already seen it. And he's like, well, come on and see it. I'm like, all right, well, fine, we'll go see it. I watched it again. I'm like, yeah, this is stupid, and this is stupid, and this is stupid. And and then another friend, and I went again. I'm like, I'm starting to like this movie now. What the heck is going on here? Uh, it is proven that people like things on repetition. Yeah. Um, that's why a lot of movies are um, – I shouldn't say current movies are called cult classics is because of that but a lot of the really old movies that people call classics were are actually really bad movies they're just used to it <laughs> right like, like right. it's a wonderful life horrible movie <laughs> bad movie we all have fun fond memories of it what and, about the last action hero uh no one's seen that movie uh, have you seen it oh yeah i saw it as a kid the references in that movie was, were amazing like, i loved just a it little... as a kid yeah as a kid it was fantastic. I loved it. It was a great ride. Sylvester Stallone as the Terminator as Terminator Two. He's like, let's go to the movie. They go in the movie theater, and then yeah. and then Robert Patrick walking by of, of the police station as a T one thousand, and there's so many like references they had in that. It's still referenced as like, wait, what kind of universe are when you when you cross like characters in different universe? Like, wait, are we doing Last Action Hero where that movie still exists, just different actors, or are we just gonna ignore the right. fact that? <laughs> that was great. Like, what, like in the um, one of the the things that I really like in that movie, which this you can you're probably gonna cut this out, but when the kid was like, he's like. I don't trust that guy, Jack. He's like, why? He's like, because he killed Mozart. He's like, what? He, Mo who? Zart. That actor that was the villain in that movie was the guy that played 
um, Vivaldi in Amadeus. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I was like, I'm like, that's all. The only reason why I knew that actor was because he was in in, in high school. We watched right. um, we watched Amadeus, Amadeus, and and that was he played Vivaldi and he <laughs> killed Mozart. Well, he didn't kill Mozart, but he worked him to death, right? Right. And I was like, oh, when I saw that last action here, I'm like, that's oh, that's the guy from uh, that movie that I saw in high school with Mozart, and then and then the kid <laughs> uh, Danny referenced to it. I'm like, oh my, that was just. Uh, Oh, so, that's but, funny. But I, I got a lot of like a lot of crap when he, from some of my friends that were you know they were like oh, you like the last action hero. I'm like yeah I do. I think it's funny. You know? You're but, always gonna have that one guy. Like <laughs> w- when I was in a comic book group, we had one guy that liked Superman Returns. Uh huh. So whenever we're talking movies and he disagrees, you always hear well you liked Superman Returns. So whatever. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it, it was great because the new members or someone just walking around just happens to be, you know, we were having the meeting, which was at a comic book store, just happens to be there. They'll literally turn around like, you like that movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I like yeah. it. I'm trying to think of what the last movie I even watched was. Oh, you know what the last movie I watched was? I watched uh, um, Ant-Man and Wasp. Okay. I didn't, I hadn't seen that, and I saw, <laughs> you know, I saw the Avengers, um, Infinity War. Mm-hmm. I still haven't seen Endgame yet, but I spoiled it all for myself because I had to. Right. But it's like the ending of that movie. I was like, oh, that tied right into it. And I was like, that's great. I didn't, you know, I I love that. I love feeling <laughs> that feeling when you're like, when they reference like another movie or something else. And you're like, oh, that's. I love that feeling. Okay, you know? so I am curious. So Ghostbusters Coalition, you guys have cars. You have back on back on track here, right? Yeah, <laughs> not, not you, a, you this have, is media litter sandwich though. We're talking about media. Oh it, yeah, and it's all. All over the place. Someone's just gonna like and we're making somebody media eat it, play. Do you remember media? That's what I always think of. I always think of media play. I used to have a media play card. I love the media play. I know media play is great. I, I used to have the, I used to have the the media play card when it was still media play. Sam Goody, right? Um, Suncoast was it Suncoast too? Yeah, Suncoast. Yeah. And there was one more place. Uh, on it, and then they and then they broke up. And Media Play had their own card, and the other ones had had yeah. their own card. That was a sad day one. when Media Play closed. But now it's it now was. we have Fye. Fye is like the same thing. Is that isn't still it? open? Fye. Yeah. Yeah, they're at. Uh, well, you know the one. There was one on Woodward, and that closed. And then yeah, I didn't still the know one. there was even one. There. I know. Or I, I've never. I I, I don't I've see any of these places it. anymore. What do we have left? Best Buy. Well, Terrence uh, uh, Terrence from Detroit Ghostbusters works at the Fye at uh, Great Lakes Crossing. Okay. I believe. I'm pretty sure the Great Lakes Crossing. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. And they had the. the I think they had the big Slimer in there from. Uh, Oh, uh, who was that prop builder? I actually have one of those Slimers, which was which actually was a <laughs> gift to us from a, a convention, which was very nice of them. You know, that, that's that we we're talking about. Where do we get our stuff from? You know, right. a lot of a lot of things we get. Um, well, they're given to us um, or members. You know, pitch in and we we purchase them. And um, as far as you know, the. The, yeah, because you guys don't. I mean, you have some patches on the table, and I don't oh. see no sponsors on them. I don't see. I don't no. see no Coca Cola, Pepsi. No. And like, do you guys have like? Uh, and, no. and you guys don't take any money at the conventions. You no. don't have like a tip jar. No, we or don't. anything like that. We do uh, once in a while. We'll have we'll have a jar for uh, a charity. So mm-hmm. if we're doing a specific charity or fundraiser, um, we'll put a jar out for that. Um, depending on the event we're at, you know, if it's. It's real tough, you know, because it's it's we do work with a lot of we work with a lot of charities. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of us don't feel right about, well, here we are at the Detroit MS walk and then here we are at a convention next weekend and we're raising money for for a different charity, you know. So we kind of just we stay neutral for the most mm-hmm. part. So um, we just we kind of offer our services. Speaking and speaking of charities, remember to use uh, smile.amazon and and cuz that's why I don't I don't promote like have my own Amazon links or anything like that. I yeah. use Smile on Amazon. I've you, you know all about Smile on Amazon. I know nothing about instead Smile of, on Amazon. Instead of use instead of going to Amazon.com, uh-huh. do Amazon or Smile dot Amazon. Uh, the only difference is and you pay the same price and and all your Prime stuff, everything still the same thing. It's just when you buy something, uh, there's a lot of people that sell that will donate uh, a small percentage of that to the oh, charity of your I, choice. I do remember hearing about that. I so I, if vaguely, you pick yeah. your charity, you do that. I pick DV Farm because, of course, my tie with DV Radio, which we are streaming on DV Radio every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone, which I am in the chat room. Um, so there's that. 
DV Farm is their charity of choice. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Uh, it, it's great. You, so you could go to DV Farm. You could just Google that. And, of course, dvradio.net. My my next Amazon purchase, I will go to Smile and I will donate to. I'll make sure that purchase goes to them. Aw. So I don't know when that what that next purchase will be or when it'll be, but uh, that they always do. It. It's it, it's a fantastic charity. It's a long um, it's a long term rehabilitation for veterans. Okay. Uh, they they have five beds and they'll house them. I think up to like two years or some a year or two years, something like that. It's long term. It's uh, they do fantastic stuff for real. That's that's yeah. That's why we do. That's why we do. What we do like like this past uh, weekend. We were at uh, Jarks had their fiftieth birthday, and uh, they actually have um, they're a nonprofit charity, and they raise mm-hmm. a ton of money, and they take care of a ton of disabled people. So it's uh, that yeah. they've got a lot of caregivers, and we we set up a whole event there with the green screen, and we were with their caregivers and taking photos with them, and it was. Uh, it's 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 a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, th- there's so many charities uh, that you, you can't. It's so hard. You can't really just choose one. You just gotta no. do what's right in that moment and what's going and what's going on. That was what we we're you know originally when we were talking about it. We we're like, okay, we wanna. There's so many charities. How about we just pick a charity a year? And the problem is, it's it's just it's just too hard to do that. You know, mm-hmm. when you're when you just go to so many events. You know, like I said, to all the events that we do, it's hard to just pick, well, we're only going to donate to, like, 80s Party for a Purpose, who donates to the, the Great Lakes Burn Camp and then other charities mm-hmm. as well. It's like, well, who do you who do you donate to, you know? Right. So that's why we kind of stay, for the most part, we stay neutral. That's why you don't see us always, you know, asking. We're not shoving a jar in your face asking for tips or asking for money. Right. We're just there to to make a change in people's lives, well, you know? You do go to a lot of charity events, and uh, and for a while, I, you know, I was doing a lot of zombie events and I kind of change, you know, I, I stopped going to so many events. And I was like, look, I can only videotape certain events. Like comic Con totally makes sense and some mm-hmm. other things that get my attention totally makes sense. But when it comes to, like, pub crawl, especially when I have to go somewhere at night with my camera, right? I, I was like, everyone else is, like, getting, you know, any event where people are drinking, yeah. it, there's got to be a charity inv- uh, involved for me to want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, especially because there's a lot of uh, uh, events like that that are for-profit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I'm only going to go to the ones for charity, and then and then that video is advertised for that charity. Right. You know, and that's the way I see it. It's like, yeah, I'm doing charity, you know, yeah, I'm doing something for myself, but the video is advertising the event, and the, and the event is for a charity, so that counts. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, it's just kind of what's what's there in the moment. I again, I are you guys an official uh, five hundred one? Uh, we are not non-profit? a five hundred one three C. No, we're so not you official. guys are not a charity. You guys are not a nonprofit. Okay. No, we're not. And you know, we've we've discussed that many times about becoming an official nonprofit, and it's uh, it. You know, we we'd like to do that, and if we don't raise enough funds, um, I think it, there's a certain amount that you have to. If you touch a certain amount of money a year, you don't even have to claim any of it. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't think that we would actually physically touch that much money as far as the charity goes to reach a point to where we'd have to start itemizing and getting more involved with that. Right. Um, usually, what we do is when we do, uh, like at we were at. Um, uh, Motor City Casino had an event and they had us out and uh, they were like, well, we, we got to pay you for it. And we're like, no, we don't accept money. And uh, we actually had them donate the check to a, a charity of our choice at the time. Um, so th- that's we don't even touch it. And then the charity sent us a letter. Like, Thank you so much for mm-hmm. sending this money to us. And just because, you know, when I feel like, I feel like it and a few other of us feel like, a few, a few other of us feel when you start touching money and getting money involved then people are like well well i spent money on this like like you said the patches and pins yeah well, you what, ever really want to mess up a friendship yeah. introduce a monetization system <laughs> right it, it's now do your members pay um so well the, do like, they pay any dues or anything we don't have any uh we don't have any dues uh no the, dues, the only no. dues they pay is, is they have to put up with me so that, that that's more than enough for some of so them. So they have to. So yeah. so there is no money at all. No money. No funding. Nope. No nothing. It is all. Uh, it is all. I think I have a wallet that's empty here somewhere. I don't <laughs> actually. I don't know where it's. Where is my uh, wallet? Um, I saw someone running down the street earlier. So I mean. <laughs> Well, they're going to be. It's going to be a dumpster <laughs> instantly. So, but yeah, no. As far as these patches go, um, some some great guys. Um, uh, Industrious dudes actually made these patches. Um, they, we had another local person making our patches, and years ago when we first started, and they weren't the, quite of good a quality. And then uh, a friend of ours from another group, um, Ghostbusters Rogue, 
uh, who's, he was in Ohio. Now he's kind of like central Southern Michigan. He's part of the coalition. And uh, he, he recommended these guys here and they do, I mean, you can see they do an awesome job. So we actually came up originally. Our logo was more like this without the city. Video version is different than the audio version. Well, you can't even see yeah, the patch I'm, like that. He's just pointing to a patch with, uh, with the Ghostbuster uh, over a silhouette of Detroit. Yes, yes. So um, the the patches, um, they made these for us. And then as far as members go, they they kind of they pay for their own patches. You know, okay. they pay costs for their patches. Um, as far as the pins go, pins and stickers and things like that. I mean, there's plenty of companies out there on the internet that you can get these made from. But actually, my uh, my partner was working with another friend who um, that's actually the Foxy Hipster, and uh, she sells uh, pins and um, enamel pins, makes pins, and sells jewelry. Right. And they actually made these pins originally for us. She had all the equipment, and she just she charged me cost, and uh, and then they went in there and they just they made them out for me. So it pretty much cost me nothing. That's why. Believe it or not, it's it's cheaper to give out these pins than it is anything else, you know, yeah. because making them yourself, it's it's pretty cheap. So and and kids always like that, you know. When you give them a sticker, then they they take that sticker, and they take it and they put it right on their shirt, and you're like, oh, well, that sticker's gone, you know. Yeah. So yeah, when we I give mean, them a that's pin. why I stopped making stickers too. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, um, I, when I worked for a radio station promotions, uh, they actually did, no longer had stickers. They had like a uh, window decals, right? Like, that you could just pull right off. Someone's not gonna throw it on their shirt and then to throw it in the trash or you see them on the ground and you see them on the walls you yeah. see them all over the place <laughs> like i would go to like uh, youtube conventions where everyone's promoting themselves and i see all these stickers and i'm like oh i'm not i'm very touchy with my stickers i only give it to people that really want it so they yeah. don't end up all over the place and sure enough at the end of the weekend you look at an escalator <laughs> stickers all right. the way up and down it's like Someone's got to clean that up, right? Yeah, because that's at a hotel. We had the that's same at, thing. That was at what was that? That was at uh, Marriott World Hotel, largest Marriott in the world, and this like stickers <laughs> on the escalator. Stickers on the escalator of all these YouTube channels no one's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, but uh, as far as the stickers go, you know, I, I'm like, okay, guys, we got some new stickers, and I'll hand them out to everybody. Thank you, to people. But it, it never fails. That night, we go out to eat afterwards. We go to Coney Island, or we go to McDonald's, which is McDonald's is my place of choice. And now mm -hmm. we can we can dive into that if you want to. But no, we'll go to <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Coney. It's, are you sure? It's a very very interesting. We're topic gonna wrap up here very soon. We are. <laughs> yeah. I gotta see what time. Forty two minutes. We've been oh, going. Wow. I could go on forever. <laughs> so, um, but uh, where were we talking? Oh, the, the stickers. They always end up, like you said, on the escalator. I'm like, mm -hmm. they, I remember at the Coney Island, every time we go to the Coney Island, the claw machine. Somebody always would slap one of our stickers on that claw machine. Oh, no. I'm like, guys, I'm like, come on. Like, they're, someone's gonna, they're going to know who did that. It's not like it's like, you know. And they're going to have to clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not you guys, you feel somewhat responsible. They'll be like, those darn Ghostbusters putting their sticker on our claw uh, machine, you know. Yeah. I will admit, I've put my sticker in, in bathrooms, but only if there's a yeah, ton of other stickers. stickers. Right. Yeah, and I've actually like what you know. I was actually one day I was like, I should throw my sticker up there, and the and the owner was just like, Yeah, throw your sticker up there. I don't care. Right. That's cool. Another time I was like, Man, there's so many stickers on that trash can in the bathroom. I'm gonna throw my sticker on there. Owner's like, Please don't. I'm actually gonna buy a new trash can in there uh, if it gets too bad. I'm really trying to not to do that <laughs> because they're all over the place. Can you can you not do that? Okay, cool, no problem. Right. That, that's why I said it loudly so someone could stop me um yep so sometimes it's cool and sometimes i hide stickers underneath filing cabinets in places i used to work <laughs> well i think the group <laughs> i think they do it just to they know how much it bothers me that's what i think that if it didn't bother me so much i think they yeah. probably they would be less prone to doing it well but there's because... places that <laughs> that will it will bother them and they will uh i don't know if you've ever come across that but well, probably because you guys don't go to many bars or stuff like that because a no. lot of bars have the rule of no promotion stickers because they don't want to clean it off their wall yeah, especially nice restaurants and stuff. You were talking about like the pub crawls. We have actually we've um, we haven't done any pub crawls. We've been asked quite a few times to do them, but we just we haven't. It hasn't fit our schedule because we're usually doing a different event. Right. You know, it's nothing against the pub crawls, but we always think about you know a bunch of people drinking and uh, and 
Ghostbuster equipment and Ghostbusters, it's kind of like, uh, we don't it's know what's going to happen. It's one of those things you have to pre-plan yeah. and, <laughs> and kind of have a cutout time. Right. Uh, one I go to is the Wine Dot Zombie Pub Crawl. Great, you know, they do things for a great charity. Those guys have been on the show more than once. Um, fantastic. Mm-hmm. If I, like, if I would, you know, if I were you guys and if you were able to go, it's one of those things where they actually changed their, they used to have an after party, but now they're having their main party up front. Um, so everyone meets at the same place at the same time and they'll, they'll do something up front. Okay. Um, like, I would go there when it starts. Because I once was going to do a, a, an episode there, and then my schedule couldn't meet. Actually, I went to How to, uh, How to Halloween, oh, and so I was fun. coming from How to Halloween, so I missed it. It's an October event then. Yeah. Which is like a Which busy... Which is the busiest yeah. time, so you probably <laughs> yeah. won't be able to because it's absolutely insane. But I'm just saying, if I did an event like that... Uh, Go at the beginning where people are gathering, right, and then leave before they, and then leave yeah. once you know. Once, once they get their photos, the first round of photos, then you can leave. Yeah, once everyone is going off to the different pubs and running around, then then leave. But even that though, like Wine Dot is, it's pretty, it's it's far. When you're driving a '77 Jeep or an '84 hearse, <laughs> it's it's kind of far, you know. Yeah. Driving there and back from this area, from the east side of Detroit, it's it's not that close and. Um, you know, when we first started, there there wasn't a big demand for Ghostbusters, and there wasn't many groups out there. But since we've, you know, since time has progressed and the new movie and all the merchandising, all the and, good nostalgia, yeah. So it's 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 hard for us to we. I try to stay local to Detroit because mm-hmm. it's it's just a lot easier for us to stay in this area. And you know, you've got other groups that have popped up now too that uh, you know we that um, that we'd all love to work with and work together. And it's. Uh, Hopefully someday we can all do that. But as far as right now goes, you know, we've got the the Great Lakes Ghostbuster Coalition with a bunch of great guys in there. Like I said, Danny Holroyd and um, the rest of the gang. Uh, plenty of good groups that are covering different parts of Michigan now to where, you know, since there are more events, we don't have to travel as much as we used to, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's always a good thing for us. Well, I'm going to go ahead and segue into Toad and Reads. And instead of... Um doing um, what we talked about earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and Facebook Ghostbusters and look at things that have a lot of comments. Uh Uh-oh. And we could just kind of read over some of them. Okay, so one of the first things I find is something posted. I assume that's the official Ghostbusters uh, uh, Facebook That is correct, yes. Mm -hmm. That is Ghostbusters. Not not yours. That's the official movie. Yes, Brand. Well, that, that was, you know, when Answer the Call came out, Ghostbusters was, they were promoting, you know, the Answer the Call movie, the 2016 movie, right. which, like you said, when I said Answer the Call, we did call it, back in the day, we called it Ghostbusters 2016. You know? Right, we because called it, it didn't have its official. Right. Okay, so um, their headline is, we're getting strong reading on this one, hashtag uh, GB20. So it looks like they're just releasing uh, Ghostbusters uh, uh, for our 20th anniversary. There's a new movie. It's a new movie? Oh, so this is a trailer for a new... I didn't even see this trailer yet. There's a new movie coming out next year. They're is actually, that what that is? That is, is that a that trailer? Is. What the heck? Okay. This came out in... This trailer came out in January. It's it's like uh, we were talking about a friend of my, my my friend Matt, who's also in the Ghostbusters Detroit, the Ypsilanti Ghostbusters. We were talking earlier about how um, when Deadpool, when uh, Ryan Reynolds, um, before Deadpool came out, they didn't actually have the movie filmed or anything, and they kind of okay. did that little teaser, and yeah. everyone was assuming what it was going to be. Um, that's kind of what this is, too, because when you... We're hoping that they're going to tie it into, because uh, there's... You know, you're getting into a whole other hour conversation right okay, now. Okay, so okay. So I'm going to watch. Okay. There, there is a trailer uh, or a teaser. I'm sorry. That's a teaser, Okay, right? it's a teaser. Okay. There's so because teaser. this is Tony Reads, I'm not even going to watch the teaser. So. I'm, I'm not even going to watch it. I'm just going to read some of the comments. Okay. Maybe this will give me a reading whether I want to watch it or not. This teaser has been out since January. It's, I, it's I'm short. Slipping it's in my literally old, like 10 seconds. I'm slipping in my old age. I knew they were working on one. I heard that. Uh, let's see here. First comment that comes up, uh, uh, this guy, Paul, says, This is awesome. It really takes me back to the awesomeness of the originals! Exclamation point. And I love how the tones remind me of the soundtrack from Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Bram gives off the strong Back to the Future vibes. So that is really cool that um, 
that the first comment's positive. I'm not used to seeing positive comments like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, you know, th- a lot of people are excited because um, they're they're going through. They're, Sony's letting uh, the Ghost Core subsidiary um, production company make another movie. And uh, nice. uh, Ivan Reitman, the original director, is uh, his son, Jason Reitman, is actually going to be the director of this movie. And he actually starred, he had a small role in the first movie. Remember the little boy uh, at the birthday party that said, my dad said you guys are... Oh, yeah! That's, that's actually right. the director's son, and he's going to be directing this movie that's going to come out next year. And um, they're they're filming in Alberta, um, Calgary, Alberta, in Canada. That filming was... I think it got pushed back a little bit, but they, there's some leaked stuff as far as stories go. And um, I don't know, I don't want to say leaked, but uh, they have an idea and we'll just have to see what happens. Same thing with the movie that came out in 2016. We just got to wait and see what happens. And it's funny because we we're like, oh, this, this bubble is going to probably burst and slow down. But it's like, then they're just like, boom, hey, here's a new movie. And we're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> kind of came out of nowhere, you know? Well, here's a comment you could read. It's a long comment. You could go ahead and just read the first part of it. Read the first part. It's the it says, uh, yay, I can be a Ghostbuster fan again. Thanks for... Oh, your screen went black. <laughs> you can read that last part. I don't I don't have a problem with Paul Fig. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. He was, he was at the premiere. When we were at the premiere and we saw him and he was like, he stood up there and I wish somebody had video of that, but he stood up there. He's like, hey, guys. He's like, listen. He's like... I've worked really hard on this and I'm trying to make a good film and and you guys are going to make or break me and I your re- your reaction to this movie is going to be you know it's 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 going to be what it is so uh I really hope you guys enjoy it and you know he was there and he full his his he had his arms open and his heart was there and he's like I really want you guys to like this and and I got to tell you ever pretty much everybody that was there enjoyed the movies seeing it in that that the chinese theater with that big huge screen in 3d oh, i mean man. it was it was amazing it was an experience and it was like we left there like all right that was good and and i hear a lot too even you know we went to we did a, a bunch of promotional stuff at for the imagine theaters when they were mm-hmm. when they showed that movie and we were at all the theaters and people were taking pictures with us and we'd ask them hey, what'd you think of the movie and a lot of people they said uh, there's people that didn't they weren't gonna like it from before they even saw right, it right right you know and there's people like that have seen the old movies like you know we want that's not what we wanted you know but I just I just want a good movie I don't yeah. I, I don't you know if it's a if it's a reboot make it different which they obviously did but you know what you all can't be Bill Murray right well the See, majority someone's got a PE god <laughs> the majority of the people <laughs> leaving that theater or they, you all can't be a mix between Bill Murray and Egon you all gotta be yourselves yeah. be a different character character <laughs> i mean you, you gotta like those act- actresses to begin with too though if you don't if you have an opinion on them and you don't really care for their humor you know but like i was saying that the people I, that I came out i think you missed the key word in that sentence well, actor actor or actress <laughs> meaning they can act meaning they could become a different type of character because they're acting. Oh, great. I'm, I'm now, 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 the people in it, some of them are great actresses, actors, actresses. I mean, even Chris Hemsworth wasn't that good in that movie. <laughs> now, now, see, I'm that guy. You made me that guy. Well, you like you like Ghostbusters Answer the Call. That You just put me in that category. So I, Yeah, you knew so, you were that guy. So You yeah. already knew well, that. I'm, I'm telling you, though, when, when people left that theater, the majority of the people leave enjoyed it more than because the people that didn't like it. Because it was a good ride. You want you pack it full of fans, you wine them. No, I'm talking them. about at the at the Imagine oh, Theaters. Okay. You I'm telling you people uh, random people like left that theater, right. the majority of them, you know, they enjoyed it more than they didn't like it. Yeah, and but there's you, also people that will defend the uh, um the J.J. Abrams Star Trek over the original Star Treks. Ooh, that's so, tough. So they're I mean, different. They're different. Everyone's they? different. Uh, <laughs> you didn't like the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies? You know what? Let's go back to Toad and Reeds here. This is actually <laughs> a really kind of a cool comment. Uh, it's a it's a little bit of a tearjerker. Go ahead. Uh, tearjerker. Jesse, uh, All right. Jesse's comment. Can I? Oh, you liked it. Yes, I liked it. Okay, I'm going to. Um, all right. Idea. Do the original cast where it starts with them at Egon's funeral? Oh, oh, they're okay. Idea. Do the original cast where it starts with them at Egon's funeral. The story can have him come back as a ghost in CGI where he has to help from the other side and it opens up a whole other dimension to the series. I mean, that's that's something that's been discussed too. And you know what what a lot of us talked about in the group, we said 
you know the video game that came out? Do you remember the Ghostbusters, the game? Uh, yeah, it was based on the original Ghostbusters 3 script where uh, it was like a line between heaven and hell or something. Right. That All they had to do was, and it, it's been done, you can make a video game a movie. Right. If they made that game a movie... I think that would be. That's what. I mean, that's the idea was they see. couldn't make that script into a movie, so they turned it into a video game. They could have. That was that because that was the original script. Right. But they could have. They could yeah. still do that in some form. They could still have you know go the same evil Shandor. They could go down that same route, and people would probably enjoy that. Oh obviously. yeah. Obviously, because I never played the video game. I know yeah. of it, but I never played it. And they could totally make changes. Yeah. I mean, just like I don't want to say, is Doom a good example? I never seen Doom. No. So, but they made Doom a movie, right? They're uh, making Doom's Sonic, not, 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 Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Okay, I saw the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, <laughs> and it made me long for the Mario Brothers movie. That's how bad it was. I love the Mario Brothers movie. You didn't like that? I liked it as a kid, but yeah. it doesn't stand as a movie. I haven't seen it recently. Okay. I did like as a kid. I enjoyed it. It wasn't what I wa- again. It wasn't what I wanted. No. But Sonic Sonic caught me completely Watch off the, the wall. The Rift Tracks version of uh, Mario Brothers because they 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 totally sum up what a lot of people thought when they saw it in the theaters. They're watching the opening scene. Um, it's like, mommy, this doesn't look right. <laughs> Are we in the right theater? I swear, and when I in the movie theaters, even watching the first time, you go, "Wait, did I put the right movie on? This is supposed to be Mario Bros. This <laughs> right, isn't. This right. isn't anything like this." Right? Where did they come off? And it's it's <laughs> loosely based off of the characters and the and the objects right. in the movie. But uh, for the Sonic, so far the best oh, Sonic. Uh, comment <laughs> I saw was. Um, was uh, a picture of the CGI Pikachu for the upcoming Pikachu Detective Pikachu movie, uh-huh. and the uh, and and the up close of Sonic, and it basically says uh, um, uh, the was it Paramount and uh, Warner Brothers. Hey Warner, you know, hey Warner Brothers, mind or yeah, hey Warner Brothers, mind if I uh, borrow some of your homework? And Paramount says, uh, yeah, just, you know, change it up a little bit uh, to make sure, it, you know, it's not obvious. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No problem. And just shows how great Pikachu looks <laughs> and how weird Sonic looks. I, I'm just, you know, I'm also torn on uh, uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, that uh, caught me off guard. When I saw that, I had. Next episode, I'm going to go ahead and just read the, yeah. those comments. Those comments are. Well, when, when I saw that. Those are the that, hateful ones. Jim I might Carrey. Just go, you know, I'm, I'm going to look up the. Did you even know about that? Did you know Jim Carrey was playing Dr. Robotnik in that movie? I thought it was a joke. Movie? I thought it was a joke. When did you. I, I just found out when you. When I heard about the trailer today and then what happened. Happened was there was Ghostbuster comments were like, hey, uh, it was Bob Anderson. He's over. Mm-hmm. He does Bob After Dark, and he's over in the Chicago area. And he's in a Ghostbuster group there. And he said, guys, he said, listen, he's like, as bad as these Ghostbuster movies could be, at least they didn't do to our franchise like they, what they did to Sonic. Oh. So he said that he's like, listen, we can all at least agree on that. And I was like, I, I mean, I I probably in, I'm the kind of guy that will enjoy that Sonic movie. It's not. It never in a million years would I've ever thought they would make a Sonic movie like that. That's okay. not what I would think. Okay, because I didn't want <laughs> all negative responses. I went to the Jim Carrey uh, Jim Carrey fan page, and so I'm reading this, um, and so there's a lot of positive comments because these are his fans. Well, they're gonna. You know, they filter out the bad stuff. You know. Uh, right. Here's one comment. Uh, honestly, I feel like they butchered Sonic's look. But I'm very pleased you, Jim, will be Robotnik. I can't wait. You make him look cool, meaning he looks nothing like what he's supposed to look like. I don't right, – right, yeah, I mean, I would think – what about, like, Danny DeVito or somebody that would, like – you know what I mean? Like, somebody short and fat that would play Robotnik because that's what the – What ro- about that one comedian with, like, 30 kids? Um, um, Hot Pocket, that guy. Uh, 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 Jim, Jim Gaffigan? Ga- yeah. He's is he big? Well, egg, he's the Eggman. You know, Robotnik is the Eggman. The guy's got to look like a giant egg, doesn't he? Well, Jim Carrey doesn't. He's no, a stick. he doesn't. I don't. Now, now, I think they do something at the end where he looks more like. That's um, what I was thinking. Something happens to him where he gains weight and he looks like him. Well, but, I also want somebody. If they're gonna make it a comedy, I want somebody funny too, that could pull off funny. Um, <laughs> that's not you know. 
that's yeah. not going to be the same character. Yeah, when I, mean, I was okay, watching, okay, I'm like, okay, is this okay, Dumb I, and Dumber? Is this, I do is this like Ace Ventura? Jim, I do like that Jim Carrey went back to to more of the '90s, uh, hamming it up in the trailer. But yeah, he, he's Jim Carrey lost his mind, and how many people don't want to watch it just because every time this guy's on TV, he talks politics and he has no idea what he's talking about. He just comes off as an idiot. Well, he's got his and art then the movie too. comes off as an idiot, and he also kind of ruined the trailer for me because he he just I I you know what that's my it opinion. made me think of Ace Ventura when the way his the acting style that he was using right. and his jokes and the way his mannerisms was like Ace Ventura. You yeah, know? I can see also that. Kind of, uh, I know Sonic has had many cartoon forms, um, but to me, the voice will always be. Um, I want Jamel s- White. Jamel White. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah. Steve why Urkel. Could, right. Why couldn't Steve they Urkel. get him? I I wonder if anyone's going to complain and say they whitewashed Sonic. What else was there that someone else they took <laughs> used somebody else's voice for something recently instead of oh uh, Child's Play? Okay. They're using uh, Mark Hamill is doing the voice of Chucky. See, I'm okay with that, um, but because the guy it's that a played reboot. the original voice is the same. You know why don't you just use the same voice? Why would you use a different voice? I don't know. You know? I don't know. Good question. Maybe they didn't want to do it, or so. maybe they maybe they just wanted uh, um, because they wanted a full refresh. You know what? I can say that same argument for Sonic, but you know, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no one knows who Jamel White is anymore, as far as the, like the kids that would be watching this movie. It, um, well, I don't know what the rating is on it. Do you I, know? Is, I, are they I, going G with it, or I don't know. Um, it's got to be G or PG. But yeah. you're right. They're not gonna. I don't think it matters if they know who he is. To you know, <laughs> right. because it's they gonna, don't. I think they know who Jim Carrey because it is. It looks right horrible. Now. It looks horrible to begin with. So you're only pandering to the main fan core anyway, yeah. or little kids that won't care who's doing anything. They won't. Do the little kids know who Jim Carrey is? Um, the Grinch. What's, I no mean, one watches. The, the Grinch was horrible too. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a movie little kids as would a, watch as with As an him. adult, I'm offended. No, actually, no, I'm not. I don't really care. What but would the kids see him as? I think it's strange if an adult shows a kid uh, the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch because there's so many adult jokes in there and it's so bad. Did you I, see the cartoon that came out recently too? When they were just—I right? did not. I didn't see it either. I was, <laughs> I was going to ask your opinion on it because I haven't seen it, but I thought it was weird that there's just the Grinch, the Grinch again. I didn't, you know. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, sounds <laughs> Eric, good. Eric, go ahead. What promote? Promote yourself, promote your companies. Well, All right. Not companies, we are but your thing. We are uh, Ghostbusters Detroit. You can find us at ghostbustersdetroit.com. Uh, we're part of the Great Lakes Ghostbuster Coalition, which is glgbc.org. Um, we are often imitated, but never reproduced. So uh, if you're looking for the real deal, it's always going to be Ghostbusters Detroit. And, of course, this was Media Litter Sandwich or on many podcast apps. Uh, so if you have a friend that you feel like maybe they're a Ghostbusters, uh, Ghostbusters fan or want to do something like this or a cosplay group, you know, share this, let them see this or hear it. Uh, or if you just like us, go ahead and share us around, comment, rate, subscribe, uh, you know, MediaLitterSandwich.com, Toadin.com, YouTube.com slash Toadin K, uh, or you just Google Toadin or Media Litter Sandwich, you'll find find us uh thank you for watching thank you for listening hope you enjoyed our discussion and may the algorithms be in your favor